you guys doing? So this is Neil from PerfectSunLED.com where you can check out my LED lights. And I want to show you a problem I ran into with the uh, 8x8 Gorilla Tent. So here's the main problem I ran into. As you can see, I couldn't finish building the tent because my ceilings are not, they're either like back here, they're like, they, like what's that? they slope down, so they're not even. And I, ha I have a feeling it has more to do with the ground because it's like concrete and the ground is not stable. And I have, I have foam underneath here, but that's only half inch foam, so that's not gonna make a difference. Um, so anyway, I took my tape measure and after I ran into this problem, because notice how this right here works. The centerpiece right now is working. So I'm gonna show you a workaround. You only, you only, you only lose three and a half inches. So if you have seven foot tall ceilings, but it's uneven for every reason in your garage, what you can do, instead of using a C, you can use C++. So I'll give you an idea here. This right here is a C. And these are three C pluses connected together. And notice the difference in length right there. See that? It's about, it's about three and a half difference in length. And so if I have, so right now I got three C pluses connected together here. Um, if I put the C here, it goes up a little too tall. And when this connects to it, it wouldn't fit on the ceiling because the ceiling was like a couple inches short right there because there's like, like unevenness in the ground or, in, or, or slopes in the ceiling. So the workaround to that is very simple. Instead of using the C bars, order a bunch more C plus bars. So unfortunately it only comes with, uh, I think it was nine C plus bars. And, uh, and I had some extra, uh, some extra ones, four extra ones. I only gives me one, you know, basically it takes three C plus bars to make, to make the right length of bar that you need to come right, come right out like that. That gives you a tent though. That is, uh, that is three and a half inches off of seven feet tall or six or normally they're like six feet 11. So now it's six feet 11, 10, nine, eight. So it's like, it gives you a ceiling height of six feet, seven and a half inches, right? So again, like I said, instead of six, six feet, 11 inches, you know, you're, you're losing three and a half inches, but if that's the only workaround that you can have, then it's a workaround. That's the only option I have. It's either, it's either that, or I have to, um, take up other space in the house somewhere. And I don't want to have to do that. Anyway, this side right here is going to be for that side is a tray for the, um, anyways, that's, that's first off, that's the solution. So if you're running into that issue, just buy a bunch more C pluses. Remember it takes three C plus bars to equal a bar to get, to get that, that ceiling height. And so, for example, this one here, um, it came with uh, basically three bars that length. Um, I think it was, or maybe it was four bars that length. I have to look at it again. No, because it only comes with nine pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so three bars at length. So I only came with three bars at length. That only does one side. I still need one, two, three, four, five, six. I still need six more. Um, six more six more bars, basically, um, that are that height. In other words, six times three. So I still need to order 18 C plus bars. Kind of sucks, but hey, you're already spending big money on the on a gorilla tent. So what's cool about the gorilla tents though is they're so strong you won't have to build any weird um, type of structures to hold a Goliath. So I can I can hold four Goliaths in here, no problem. You can do pull-ups in them. In fact, um, I have another five by five that that I'm doing a grow on with with the Finos, the um, the regular photos. I'll be taking pictures of that every single day, and it's be a time when it's once it's all done, it, it'll be on. It's be about three months from now. I'll, I'll be on YouTube, but right now. Um, it's at uh, a buddy's house, and so I can't really film there because he's not comfortable with it. Um, but he's cool with me taking pictures and then having a time lapse video showing the entire grow um, from beginning to ending with, with the Goliath. Anyway, so it's gonna be awesome. I, I'm pretty positive we're gonna get three pounds off of it. Um, it's just uh, I don't have the plant. I can't I can't do it here because I don't um, I don't have a commercial license like he does, so I can't grow as many plants as he can. Um, but anyway, so uh, my plant limit will be right in here. I'll have eight here, eight there. Um, that will give me 16 total auto flower plants and I have to do just one grow because I want to go to Lake Havasu in Arizona and visit and check it out and just see if I like it there and uh, do some jet skiing and I won't be able to like be on that, that short vacation, well some, maybe like two week vacation and grow at the same time. I won't, build, I won't be able to leave the plants alone. So basically what I'll be doing is I wasn't going to do a perpetual grow for the rest of this year and get a couple of perpetual grows in. Well, at least a couple of cycles of petrol grow going um, before before you know, I'll have to um, take everything down uh, and start over again next year after the break. I always take like a month break off. Anyway, so um, this half right here, so the eight by eight by ten is perfect. So I got I got Goliath on that side for the eight plants, and then I got the Purpose Sun Cobb on that side. This is indeed all my room I need for my my two um, dehumidifiers up on buckets and a bucket in the center for all to go into a sump pump going out through one of the, see that little hole over there at like the four 
the four inch uh, thing. The holes they come, you know, they can, anyway, whatever those are called. The, the, for, they use it for tubes and uh, for ducking and stuff. Anyway, that's, or and for cables and things like that. And that's where the hose will go out, then it'll go outside and it'll feed my grass. And then um, on this side, I'll have my tank that'll, 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 uh, that'll water feed everything. So um, kind of cool. And just another thing you want to make sure you do here uh, is if you have an 8x4 tray like this, you want to offset it. So this side is offset. And notice that side over there is, is kind of like hitting the pole a little bit. And if you don't do it that way, it won't fit in here right. Um, they didn't design these things with that in mind, I don't think, that, that where people were going to use flood trays that are 4x4 four four because they hit the poles and they bend them. In fact, these two poles are here be kind of stretched apart, so I'll probably have to cut a little groove right here. Um, either drill, just take a one inch drill and like start drilling right here. I don't know if you can see this. Take a one inch drill, start drilling right there. It'll make a half circle in here, or you can just like, you know, cut it with a, a saw or something like that if you want to. Basically, you just need a notch here so this pole can fit inside that notch. Boom, like that. Um, you can also do that for the edges too. That way, it all fits in there snugly. So that's a workaround. Um, or maybe if they sell a flat tray that doesn't have these big flanges sticking out, um, I don't know. But that's just the way I'm gonna do it. So uh, you can do it however you wanna do it, but that's just the way I'm gonna do it to fit it in there. Yeah, so I'll have, I'll have room for everything. I'll have my fan here in the center, blowing back and forth, oscillating. It's a really badass fan. It actually oscillates, I don't know where it's at. It's right around here somewhere. Oh, there it is, a hurricane. Anyway, uh, it goes, it, it oscillates back and forth and up and down. So it like goes like that. It's really awesome. And it's very gentle. You just want a very gentle uh, breeze for a fan. For the plants, um, I'll be exhausting with, uh, I'm going to try six inch. Um, uh, they, they, they move like, I can't remember what the CFM is, whatever. Anyway, they move a good amount of air. So hopefully, um, and that's going to be moving air between, hopefully between two tents if I need to, um, in order to try to, try to regulate the, the, the air in both tents. Um, and uh, anyway, so for like, if I want to do like vegging and, and things like that in the other tent. Um, anyway, so that's that. So yeah, that's a workaround. So if you run into a situation where you're like, oh crap, I just start, you know, measure your ceilings first and, and every single point. Uh, make sure you don't have like warpage in the ground, especially if you're in a garage, you most likely have warpage in the ground. And I'm pretty sure it's the ground, not the ceiling so much. Um, still the whole thing it does look like it kind of slants a little bit because it does as I go down there where I measure up it gets like bigger and bigger so and for, I could try to put it over here on the side of the garage but I still I still measure it around and I saw it, I saw it a couple points because the ground's uneven that it was like a half inch off or an inch off and that's enough to where it won't fit you know the poles won't fit with the tops on there they won't be, they won't be able to get the roof on um, so anyway that's the workaround is using C, C plus bars three use three 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 C plus bars that these are that, that's the one that's extension bars they come with. Too. Like you basically, you'd only use one C plus bar to extend it to make it from six and eleven to to seven eleven. So if you want to put it inside the house, typically houses have eight foot tall ceilings. You can actually do that, and it comes with extended um, uh, Velcro or not Velcro zipping thing that a strip that strips all the way around the tent. So between this part of the tent, like this comes up, makes a wall. In between, well, you can see right there. See, it, it actually pulls up, makes a wall between that part and the and the and the roof that comes down. Those zip together and come around. Well, there's an extension you put between there that adds like another foot, bam, a foot extension. So you can like, that's what the C pluses are for. But anyway, in this case, I'm using C pluses to make a slightly shorter tent than what it should be. Yeah, that's the workaround, guys. I know it sounds kind of stupid and, you know, not stupid, but all the way. Anyway, the other thing is you might be worried about the stability, like, because you're having three pieces together and that these, like where the joints are, where each of these joints are, it's not as stable as if this were all one piece of metal. I went, don't worry about that, because by the time you have all the poles on the, on the roof here, and you have all the crossbars, the crossbars are super strong. So each, each, each corner section has the two Fs, which have, have a dip down a little bit. They like kind of dip down like this a little bit. And then the two E's that go across like that. And those two E's, um, you can do pull-ups on those. I, I actually did, already did it in, in, in a five by five tent um, at my buddy's house where we have, have the photos set up there. Uh, again, I'm gonna be, just stay tuned for that. Um, it's going to be a time-lapse video, and it's going to show the hopefully the three pounds I get off of it. For now, this is what I can do, and that's going to be autos. Um, I, I was thinking about doing photos in here, um, but I have a bunch of autos I want to do, and I promised everyone I was going to do that, so I got to do that. But but just stay tuned. Just trust me. Um, the other grow is happening, and if I can convince him to to let me do some little videos in there and stuff, um, then hopefully that'll be cool. If not, then you have to wait for the time lapse video. But it'd be awesome because so we're taking pictures every single day, and that way you can kind of see how the plants grow up, which is really cool. But yeah, so um, that's pretty much it. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, that's that's how that's how that's how it's set up. And this this is going to give you, you know, if you now just doing eight plants on three gallon pots. I'm almost I'm almost like I was like originally I was going to want to do more. I wanted to do the pretzel grow where there's sixteen pots here, sixteen pots there, packed really tightly. And then what I was going to do is have eight of them flower like every every three weeks planting them. So I'd have eight at, at, at any given time at the at the end of harvest. I'd have them be nine weeks old. And the other ones that are six weeks old, those ones would all be flowering. All the other ones would be three weeks old and then zero days old. So those other two, other other two rows would be vegging. Therefore, I wouldn't be over my, I wouldn't be over my limit. I'd have eight here and eight there, so sixteen total, and that puts me in my limit. Um, but if if I did all sixteen at once or sixteen and sixteen, I can't do that because um, it'd all be flowering at once. And see, green would be awesome. That's that's how you get the maximum maximum yield out out of the lights. But I, I can't do that. Now, the other option would be it was do less plants and train them out more. But I already bought a bunch of uh, fabric pots that are three gallons. And so, you know, like I said, I'm not really going for big yields right now with the autoflowers. I'm just going for what plants are. They grow good, and I like how they grow, and I, and I like how strong they are. I'm trying to go for percentage. I'm trying to go for high THC content, stuff that can, that can compete with, with regulars or with photos, sorry. And so that's my main, that's my main goal. So anyway, I'll be doing eight and eight so i think there'll be plenty of room to kind of bush them out and get them kind of big three, three gallon air pods will still give me plenty of room with with pure cocoa or cocoa mixed with uh with rock wool um, probably about 60 30 60 cocoa 30 30 rock wool cubes rock wool cubes are the little crouton cubes i'm talking about before they're like they're like this you know, little square crouton cubes anyways that will give me a nice um anyway it's worked before really great and that I'm, I'm playing a maybe pool between two lights with only eight plants, um, especially autos, and then being in smaller pots. And I'm not I'm not expecting a big yield out of it. Maybe uh, four pounds, something like that, for the whole entire area, which is two pounds per light, which is pretty good. That's what I'm hoping to pull. But I know if I had bigger plants, like eight five gallon pots or even seven gallon pots, I could definitely pull it off. Actually, seven gallon pots, I probably only have four plants on each side uh, because it gets so big and bushy and trained out. Um, and 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 maybe even three gallon pots that might get big and, and bushy out enough actually. So we'll have to, we'll have to wait and see what happens there. Uh, maybe with eight, maybe eight plants will be too many. I'll have to pull some out, but they're really small plants. They're not, they're not big plants. They're not like, uh, you know, Northern lights. If I did all Northern lights uh, by world queen seeds, I can only do like four plants in here. Um, it depends, I guess, on what kind of a pot I had them in. If I don't put them in two gallon pots, of course, they wouldn't get nearly as big, but yeah, anyway, so that's that. And that's, that's how you set it up guys. Um, so if you're running into that issue, and I know I talked about other stuff. I just want to kind of keep you guys updated on what I'm doing and I, that I am getting this grow going. And so, unfortunately, um, I don't really have much help setting the tent up now. So I might have to get uh, someone out here to help me finish finish setting it up. It's really hard to do by yourself to get the ceiling on. At least it's really hard. But now it'll be much easier because I have a much more room there. Anyway, before I couldn't even fit that there. Um, just to give an example of what I'm talking about, if it's not seven feet tall, then you can't get the C. You can't get the C in there at all. Um, if you have a C bar, that's an A bar. Where's the C bar at? If you have a C bar, which is right here, make sure this is a C. Yeah, C. It's C, C, not C plus. If you can read that, there you go. C. If I take the C bar and take this off, you're already gonna, you're already going to see that this isn't going to fit. Let's go this way. Sorry about this. Just take a second. You can already see. Look, it it won't it won't fit. If I put that piece on there, I can't it like I can't get it in there. It's just because this is not seven feet tall. I already measured it and I tried to get it to work and just when it works. So that's where you can see the difference with the. Uh, you can even see. Look, it's even taller with the actual thing on it, which gives it a little more tallness. Now, if this was stuck in there, it'd be like that tall. So, like I said, about three and a half inches. I already measured it. Like I said. So yeah, that's the option is instead of using one, one C, use three C pluses. And I, I know I could make this video really simple and just say, hey, if you have short ceilings that aren't quite seven feet tall and you're running into a problem getting your tent set up and you already bought it all and now you're pissed off, you know, don't worry about it. Just buy enough C pluses. Remember, it takes three, three C pluses equal, equal one bar that you need and then replace that with your C bar. And bam, now you have your tent where you can set it up. Um, uh, it, unless your ceilings are really, really short, then you won't be able to set it up at all. But yeah, so there you go, folks. Um, my, only, my only option was was to try to bring this into the house, and that's still kind of an option on my head. I'm still thinking about it. But I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna go with the C pluses. That way, I can keep it out in the garage. 
Um, but if I do do it in the house, I'll have to like sacrifice a room like my office or something like that, or maybe my game room and do it in there. And I'll have to run extension cords from out here because all, it's all wired out here already for it, for the grow. So I'd have to run a bunch of extension cords, high quality extension cords from each one. That'd be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight quality extension cords and um, to get all the electricity into there. I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't need that many of them, but I'm just saying if I wanted to run them all in there, uh, but yeah, that'd be, uh, That'd be a lot of money because it'd be, I'd have to probably, probably buy at least 50 foot extension cords for that to work. But anyway, so um, I don't want to do all that. That's a lot of, a lot more room for the electricity to flow uh, through, a lot more wire for it to flow through. And anyway, so I'm just, not, and I'm not going to do all that. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, this will be a bunch of Mephesto genetics. I'm going to do some Mephesto genetics. I'm going to do more Gorilla Glue. I might throw in um, a couple Dutch Passions, but I have a feeling they'll get too big. And I don't want to, I don't want plants getting too big in here because I'm, the whole point is I got short ceilings. I want to try to keep everything kind of even. I know the Mephesto genetics are, 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 are shorter plants. The Gorilla Glues by Fast Buds are shorter plants. I'm just trying to keep short plants, especially with such short, you know, such short, such short ceilings already at seven feet. And now, now I've knocked all the way down to, you know, six feet, like seven and a half inches. That's like every, everything counts. And also, um, the, because there's this bar here, there's this bar here right here. See that? That adds a little bit extra height now to this. Um, and I'm also thinking about angling this whole entire thing, like putting something on this side to angle it so it all flows to that end, and putting a sump pump at that end to get all the runoff water, and then cut and have the and then have the um, the tubing, the three fourth inch tubing going out that little hole right there, and then going out, then going out, then going out of the garage um, to water plants and stuff like that. So the outside stays like it's getting like free, basically stuff that I would normally just throw away. I mean, I don't throw it away. I always go dump it out in the garden or something anyway. But it just makes it a lot harder when you're having to vacuum it every single day after you water and then take the vacuum and dump in it, you know, the wet vac. This way it just pumps it all out like that. All right, so that's going to be the setup. So, yeah. Well, probably just try to start all over. All right, so fuck all that shit. I, I don't want to fucking like, you know... Re -record. Actually, you know what? I did end up re-recording the entire thing, and it came out. It said 17 minutes. It was like 29 minutes. I'm like, how did it get longer? Uh, anyway, so that's that. That's all done. But, hey, for you, those of you guys who are still watching, I figured I'd do some FaceTime real fast to ask you this question. Um, you guys, your guys' feedback, the ones that watch to the end of my videos, mean a lot to me. And so all, all I'm asking you here is that a uh, quick question is, uh, hold on a second. Gotta get my girlfriend keys. Sorry about that. She needed the keys because uh, we're about to head out to go to uh, get some eat real fast. But anyway, so um, my question for you guys is, do you mind every once in a while if I do an off-topic video? By the way, at the, right now, after I'm done talking and asking you this question, you guys are going to see a quick clip of a video that's going to be on my art channel. And it's going to be a full video of um, showing how to ride segways. Um, the 6.5 inch tires, how to jump off speed uh, uh, curbs, how to ride them properly, how not to crash, how to go fast without crashing, how to do S turns, how to jump over speed bumps. But I'm going to show you guys real quickly how to jump over speed bump. Really, really, really quick, small part of the video, just this one thing I'm showing. And if you guys want to watch the whole video, just go to click on Grow Pot Cheaply, and then you'll see on the right hand side of my other channels, click on my art channel, and then just type in uh, Segway uh, on the one channel on the, my, my channel's art, my channel's homepage. You see at the top there, and it says about, and right next to about, there's a little search icon. If you click that search icon, it allows you to search just my videos. And then just type in Segway or Hoverboard, um, and then that video will come up, and you guys can check out the rest of it. Or I'll, I'll link right to it so it just goes to the rest of it at the end of this video. But what I wanted to ask you guys is, do you mind every once in a while if I throw out a video that's totally off topic, has nothing to do with growing? Now, keep, keep in mind, I'm always into grow videos. I'm a constantly do grow videos. Um, I'm going to do an update video on how to grow with the, my organic system, my hydroorganic system with cocoa. And how to, uh, I did a video before on that, but I have some new stuff that I'm doing that works really good. I'm still, it's still, it's still work in progress, but it's working really good. And it's something that I want to go to eventually because water is just water. That's awesome, right? But, the, you know, having to check the runoff every now and again to see if the pH is up or down, that kind of, I don't know. So it has its ups and downs, but um, still, it's really fun to do and uh, really easy to do and really good for like outdoors and stuff. Uh, so 
Um, I'm still going to be doing all kinds of tips and tricks on how to grow. Uh, I do plan on making it. Someone keeps asking me, or not someone, people keep asking me and email me, hey, do you have a, a, a grow book yet? And I, and I do plan on writing a grow book. As you guys know, I'm a writer. Um, I have published. I, have a, I shouldn't say publish because I'm, it's one thing to publish for free. It's another thing to get paid for your work. It's a lot harder to get paid for your work. So I've actually sold short stories to magazines. I've also uh, sold my book and got paid for it, uh, Biddy Nature, a new kind of vampire novel, which you can find on Amazon. Anyway, um, I'm also working on screenplays, and I'm going to be entering one to this, uh, the competition coming up here soon, the Big Break competition. And I hope that can win. It'd be awesome. It's a sci-fi that, that it's unlike anything you've, you've ever, well, in this case, read before I've ever wrote a screenplay, but if it ever becomes some sort of movie, it'd be awesome. But anyway, so... Um, I, as you guys know, I've been big into fighting ever since I was like eight years old, maybe even seven. Uh, ever since I was like seeing Jean Claude, I'm 39 years old by the way right now. So um, ever since I was watching like Jean Claude Van Damme growing up and Bruce Lee and stuff, uh, always you know wanted to fight. And so uh, I started doing kickboxing, and had this guy that was a, a really good kickboxer that happened to live in the same apartments as I did, and uh, he won a lot of competitions, things like that. So he, he started teaching me kickboxing when I was a kid. And then from there, I, I, I started stretching and stretching and trying to do the splits like Van Dam. And anyway, so I did a little bit of wrestling in high school. When I was like 17, 18, I got into Muay Thai. I uh, trained with a really good Muay Thai tighter, um, Terry Hill, that went to Thailand to learn and everything. And I uh, also did some Prime Mantis Kung Fu at the same time because uh, they were both renting the, the space. And so they both used the space. And one guy, this old uh, short guy, looked like long mustache. Anyway, he basically taught Kung, Prime Mantis Kung Fu. And there's all these different kinds of kung fu, you know, different different forms of kung fu, and it was kind of cool. And I just I just realized, you know, you know, kung fu is not for me. It's not. It's kind of cool. Like the competitions are kind of cool, but it's not good for like, that one. It's okay for a street fight. Like, I guarantee that. Anyway, once I I took a black belt out, and I was just getting started with Muay Thai, and but Muay Thai is very the most basics of basics. But anyway, I, I whipped I whipped their dudes black belt like in sparring. It was nothing. Like it was full contact sparring. And I just whooped him like it was nothing, and that was just with my my kickboxing, and then out, and then then transitioning to Muay Thai, and of course I, a lot I, I wasn't able to throw elbows or anything like that, so um, it kind of limited my skill set of Muay Thai. But still, I whipped his ass easy, and I'm like, how does he have a black belt? That's when I realized that a lot of martial arts are bullcrap, and so I stuck to things that worked, like you know, you know wrestling works, and you know wrestling ground and MMA that kind of stuff. But I really fell in love with boxing, so I got into boxing big time. Still love boxing, still do boxing. And then uh, jiu-jitsu, love jiu-jitsu due to, due to plant, 10th Planet Jiu-jitsu, 10th Planet Jiu-jitsu by Bravo, but also Brazilian Jiu-jitsu is great too, and I, I learned a lot from those guys, and I, I do plan on going to an actual uh, Brazilian Jiu-jitsu gym, um, so that'd be cool, just to see like how it feels different to roll with those guys and stuff, and do some 10th Planet stuff on them, and uh, and you know learn back and forth, it's fun. So every now and again, you know, I throw off-topic videos on my art channel and they freak out you know they're like what does this have to do with art and blah 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 you know and so what do you guys think you I really care about your guys's opinion because you guys are the ones that watched the end you're still watching or still listening to me right now that's awesome and so uh, what do you think every now and again throwing a short video up about jiu-jitsu or boxing or how to how, how to do better in a street fight you know um, how, how to use jiu-jitsu to your to your advantage in a street fight uh, especially if it's one-on-one -on -one. And how to dirty, how to dirty jutsu, you know, holding eyeballs out if you need to, and things, you know, whatever it takes. If you feel like, you know, your your life's in jeopardy. Um, anyway, what do you guys think of that kind of stuff? Or some good boxing tips, you know, just things that can help you box. If you're just getting started in boxing, you know, the like basic boxing tips that'll help you to spar better, so that you don't just go in there and get your butt whipped and get punched in the face a lot by these guys. Are much more, you know, they've been there longer. Let's say a guy's been there for a year only, but still he has a year on you. That's a long, that's a long time. If you're just getting started, that guy that has a year on you, unless you're a natural, he's going to be punching you a lot in the ribs and the liver and the face. And you're like, what's going on? And so I can teach you basic tips and tricks that will help you transition into boxing much easier. Um, and I really don't want to have to start a whole new channel for, for that. You know, I, I probably will eventually, but I really don't want to. So um, what do you guys think of me every now and then just off topic videos like that? Of course, I've already asked about the... Uh, it got it got pretty good responses and that was the 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 stone physics so and, and by the way if you guys want to check out some really mind-boggling stuff that i've talked about on my art channel it's called the delayed choice quantum eraser 
And if you go to my art channel and type in, just type, just type in delayed choice or just type in quantum eraser, and those videos will show up on my art channel. And um, yeah, check them out. They're crazy. And this isn't metaphysics. This is actual physics. This is actual experiments that are done with actual equipment. And the, the results are absolutely mind-boggling, bizarre, crazy. And the philosophical implications of these experiments are insane. And I talk about some of that stuff in those videos. And there's some of my, my, my more popular videos on there. Believe it or not, on my art channel, guess what my most popular videos on there? And what's funny is I did it as a social experiment to prove that I knew what it took to make a popular video, to make a video that would get over a million views. And actually, it's not my most popular video. Um, it's my second most popular video, but it's my most watched video, most common on video. And it's, uh, it's, it's way over 100, 100, 100, view, 100 mil, or 1 million views now. And it's called uh, the official inkblot test, are you crazy video. And it's more of an entertaining video than anything else, but it's really fun to take and, and leave your answers and stuff like that. And, and so anyway, I, I had an idea what would make a video pop on YouTube, and so I made that video for that purpose as a, as a social test or a YouTube test to see if I understood the mechanics of what makes videos go viral on YouTube. And it worked. It didn't go super viral, but you know, it, it, it did really good, and it's still doing good, I, and, it, and it constantly. In fact, that's the only video that really makes that channel any money. I have like 600 videos on there, some super good, high quality videos on how to draw and those like make four dollars a month whereas that Warsack video for whatever reason makes like two hundred dollars a month still to this day I can't believe it many years ago and uh, I don't really care about that money that money is nothing you know like I make over or I shouldn't say over I make right around a hundred thousand dollars a year being the top instructor art instructor at Udemy um, do my art courses there so I really I don't, I don't even need to do the lights you know I'm, I'm already well off which, is, which I'm, I'm not trying to brag don't get me wrong I grew up hard. I grew up poor on food stamps and all that kind of shit. Anyway, so but if you guys don't mind, every once in a while, me throwing a a video and maybe just like a blog and just about my normal life or you know a Segway video. I mean, hey, here's me on my Segways. Check this out. I got my new. I got new Segways coming in. The new big fat 10 inch tires, uh, dirt tires, off road Segways. I'm really looking forward to those. They're Swagtrons. I think they're called the Swagtron T6s. I think. You know, it's the newest one and that looks badass. I can't wait to get until they get here. I'm, Oh man, I'm gonna be ripping it up on those things. But yeah, so um, what do you think? Check out this little segue video and please leave a comment. Please leave a comment. Is it okay I post videos once in a while? I know you guys will say, do whatever you want, it's your channel, but I care about what you guys think. Do you guys care to see those videos? If you only want to see like girl videos and that's it, that's fine. I understand that. I'll just put it on my art channel. And then, um, you know, then if you guys want to check them out, you can check it out on my art channel. But uh, I'm hoping you guys will be cool with it and you guys, you guys want to see other stuff from me besides just how to grow. Because I have a lot more to offer than just how to grow. And uh, I just don't want to have to make a bunch of YouTube channels. I already got enough as it is. Uh, matter of fact, I might have to like just stop doing some of the channels or something. Or maybe, I don't know. We'll see. I have a lot of stuff to share about different stuff. So, all right, guys. Double peace. Bam. Jump off curves, how to go over speed bumps, and just how to join ride your Segway a little bit better. This is just, uh, you know, one of the cheaper ones that have the 6.5 inch wheels. We're gonna go off the curb. The important thing when you go off this curb is you wanna kinda jump a little bit. So, right as you're going off, you wanna make sure you have enough speed. You wanna slow down. So you wanna make sure you just keep going with the speed and then keep yourself, keep your feet flat and just kinda jump up and then land. And then, and then just land straight and you'll be good to go. I'll show you how to do it right now. That's the basic technique, so it goes like this. Kinda jump. Another trick I want to show you is how to go over a speed bump, which I'll show you over there. Alright, let's go do this. Woo! Actually, for the speed bump, there's one other cool trick you can do on these things. It's kind of fun. Right now, to, do the, to execute these properly, what you want to do. It's similar to go off a speed bump. It's similar to riding a skateboard over a, over a speed bump or even a bicycle over a speed bump. I mean, unless you just like ride right over it. You want to kind of get your knees bent like this. Have your knees bent a little bit. And you want to kind of act like a shop absorber. As you're going forward, push, push, pause. You want, your, you want your knees kind of bent. So when you go over, you want to kind of jump a little bit. Almost like you're trying to jump off the off the hoverboard, kind of like on a skateboard. You want to just like.
go over, you want to kind of pump. Like, you know how you do, you do bike pumps over, over like a big bump? So if you're like, if you're like going over a, a big bump at, at, at the skate park, you know, a hill like this, you want to kind of pull all your weight up, and up the, once you're at the height of the bump, you want to press back down like that. Similar thing here, you want to pull up and then come like back down. So it's like boom, boom, like that. I'm gonna do it one more time from the back, maybe, maybe a little bit different. So kind of load, load up, and then down. And I'll try from the front view, stay right there, I'll start from the front view. You want to kind of load up and back down. You don't want to just try to roll right over it, unless you got like big 10 inch wheels, like we got some off-road ones of these coming. These are the 6.5 wheels. If you got big 10 inch wheels, or like even maybe the, uh, the off-road ones that have the 10, 10 inch wheels, you might be able to just like go like and ride, like watch how different it is, and try to ride right over it. Right over. It's a lot harder if you try to ride right over it, especially if you try to go slow. You know, it's like, it doesn't feel as cool. If you want to try to get air, you want to try to pump it. Especially if the curve's bigger. Like, watch. If I try to go this big curve over here, come closer. This curve right here is really big, especially like right here. If I try to come up over this, it doesn't want to go. See? It just stops. So to go over a big curb like this, you pretty much have to jump it. And uh, it's definitely a little more advanced. It's not a simple technique. So this is a speed bump that I can't just, I can't just roll over. I have to actually load and pump to get over it. Now if you do, that's kind of slow. If you go kind of faster, you can actually go over the air. So let's see if I go a little faster this time. So I'm going to do one more time. If you go kind of faster and then kind of pump it, feel the air, just come over it. It feels much, much cooler. All right, so now we'll go do some general tricks. So it's